Okay, so continuing on from our uh, last video where we started the lot layout, I should label the road. This is Ocean Avenue. And then I'll put that right about there. Move up a little bit. And then I'm going to rotate that to align with the road. That would make sense, don't you think? So I select it, left click once, and then left click the point I want to rotate about. You'll notice I'm using this two-point rotation, which I think works a lot better than the active angle. Uh, and then I can rotate around. In fact, I'll shift left click down here to the end of that line. And then it lines up just perfectly. Now what I'm going to do is place the 45 by 36 foot building on the lot. So I'll switch to the work level briefly. Because uh, what I've got is tape measurements from the corners of the lot to the corner of the building. So I'll pick the arc tool. In center start mode is, I think, the easiest to, to work with. And I know that from B2, so I click on B2 as the center, I need to go 37.846 feet out into the lot to get to the first corner. So I make a little arc there by left clicking. From B, what is it, 3, I guess it's off the screen here, 71.063. I do the same thing, left click and mark through that. And then from B1, I go up to the other corner of the building, 40.896. And I draw in another arc. And then from B5, I got the same kind of thing, 51.616. So I draw in those arcs. So those are the two front corners of the building. And I'll switch to the building level, smart line and then try to hit that. I'll zoom in a little bit. That looks like intersection there, doesn't it? But I'm going to make sure by hitting the I key. Let's tentative once. Make sure the line's working. I key, then it drops there. Sometimes it seems hard to get the, uh, the snaps to kick in. Let's try the I key again. When you get the intersection, you'll see one pink line is solid and the other one's dashed. That makes sure that you're on it. We'll go at right angles to that, 36 feet back. On the right angle to that, we'll go up, back up 45, left click, and then hopefully hit the end of that line. If I kind of get on that line with the mouse first and then move up to the end, it'll snap to the end of the line. So there you got it. And what I'll do next is measure it just to make sure that I hit it right. And first I'll turn the work level off and then use the measure tool to make sure that building is in fact 45 feet and it is I think 45.001 okay well I guess that's gonna have to be close enough but when you do these sort of arc modes and stuff you're you have a certain level of tolerance so the owner of this building wants to expand but they can only move a certain amount of square feet you know, larger and only within 10 feet of the border of the lot. So let's draw in uh, the border of the lot with the with the offset. And you can what we can do then is use. I think I'm going to use that move parallel again with keep original and see it's all one element. It has to be one element to make this work. I can move in 10 feet and left click and now we can we know we can show the owner this is how much you can build in okay uh, I can also give them a measurement I don't want distance I want uh, area in this case I'm going to use difference because you already got a building there right so if I pick the first element you know it's left hand corner of the screen identify element and then additional elements to subtract. I left click again, and then one more click gives me a space of 5,857, I guess 58 square feet, right? 58, 58. So that's the area in between the lot boundary, actually the lot setback boundary, and the building itself. 
So remember to use the Create Complex Shape tool if your boundary happens to be in pieces, which mine isn't in this case, but um, if you if you have to have it as one element before you can do that full copy parallel like that. The other way that you could measure the volume though is if we measure the area, excuse me, is use the flood system too. You might be able to make that work. Or if I left click in here, uh, it didn't look like it worked. It, it got the whole thing without that. Uh, let's pick the locate interior shapes and try it again. There we go. Left click again, 50 amp. So that worked. Uh, making sure we hit interior shapes. Uh, you got to kind of be picky with some of these tools. If it doesn't work at first, look at some of the check boxes and, and see what might help you do it. Wow, that'd be quite a ride, wouldn't it? So let's go ahead and put that buildable area on the drawing here. Buildable area equals, hit the wrong key, 5858, 5,858 square feet. And we'll put that like right here. Okay. The other thing the owner wanted to know is what the distance was uh, between the shortest distance to that buildable area boundary around his lot. So if we essentially want to know the dis minimum distance between this building and the lot. So I think the easiest way to do that is probably to do the minimum between measure distance. And if I just click the the building and then click that lot it shows a small pink line across there and it's 14.48 feet so that's kind of a handy tool what if you wanted to know the distance between that corner and the front of the buildable area you could use the perpendicular click on the boundary and notice that that line stays perpendicular as I move along I left click that front corner there and it shows me that it's 19.087 feet. I can right click to get out of this now. So if you look around in these tools, long element or whatever, uh, those can come in pretty handy when you're trying to figure stuff out. That's something to keep in mind. But for now, let's move on and put this in the sheet model. You didn't see that drop down, it went off the screen, but. I made an ANSI size sheet model and I'm going to add my references to the uh, design drawing that I've been working on. Default model, one inch equal, well let's try one inch equals 50 feet, see how that comes in. Doesn't look very good, does it? That's the dreaded giant text phenomenon. Uh, some of you are more aware of this than others, but I think I figured out how to fix it. If you double click on the reference, and then uncheck this use active annotation scale hit OK it should all go away back to the normal size. Let me hit the... yep that seems about right. Uh, still looks a little small. Let's up this to maybe one inch equals 30 feet. Hit OK. That's probably about right. I can move that into alignment real quick. Not bad. And we're going to want to put that same title block on that we've been using. So I had a reference. I think I did that a couple weeks ago, week five maybe. Yep. There's title block one to one. Hit OK. And where is it? It's just way the heck over there. So we use the move. Place that over here. Zoom in a little more, a little more. Anyway, you got the idea there, right? That should do it.